Hey, Michael, the road around this keeps sticking. It's probably just a little gummed up. I got a run, line four is down, and they're waiting for me. Just uh, put a little degreaser around the shaft there. Okay, where is it? It's in the white bottle on the shelf. Okay. Oh man, they're all white bottles. This must be it. This didn't have to happen. Most accidents really don't have to happen. There's regulations, procedures, and processes that, if followed, would have prevented Anne from getting burned by that chemical. The key to working safely with chemicals is information. Information about their hazards and how to protect ourselves from those hazards. So, let's learn about the important information and then we'll come back and fix what's wrong with this picture. Now, of course, it is possible to work with chemicals safely. Millions of us do it every day. To help provide all of us with the information we need to work safely, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, has established the Federal Hazard Communication Standard. You've probably heard it called HAZCOM, or Right to Know. It's often called Right to Know because that's what it's designed to do to help us know about any chemical hazards we may be exposed to, and to help us know how to work with and around chemicals safely. The Hazard Communications Standard now mandates the use of the Globally Harmonized System of Classification of Labeling of Chemicals, GHS for short. It's all information that gives employers a set of guidelines for identifying chemical hazards and training employees about chemical safety. Your employer has a written hazard communication program in place that includes a list of all the hazardous chemicals in the workplace and safety data sheets for each hazardous chemical that are readily available to employees. We'll look at these important documents later in this video. The written program also ensures that all containers have labels that identify their contents and have appropriate warnings about their hazards. We'll look at the information that must be included on the labels. There must also be a plan to inform and train employees about chemical safety procedures. To begin with, there are two types of hazards to be aware of. Physical hazards and health hazards. Physical hazards can result in effects like burns, fires, or explosions. Chemicals that present physical hazards include substances like combustibles, including fine dust particles, flammables, corrosives, and explosives. Some compressed gases or chemicals that react strongly with water or other chemicals also present physical hazards. Health hazards can result in effects ranging from mild skin disorders to cancer or birth defects. Some chemicals can damage certain organs such as our lungs, kidneys, or liver. Some can damage body systems such as our nervous system or reproductive system. The consequences of these hazards to our health can be acute or chronic. Acute means the chemical affects us rapidly and the effect result from a single exposure. Chronic effects take place over a longer period of time. Often the effects don't show up until some time after the exposure or after repeated exposures. The point is, the effect from a chemical may not be as apparent or as immediate as... as say, falling off a ladder, but it can be just as deadly. This is Larry. We're gonna be running into Larry a lot in this program as we learn about working with chemicals safely. And we're gonna run into some situations that will need some, well, fixing. 